Bonnie McGovern. My contact information is my website, bonniemcgovern.com, my phone number 808-572-4024, and I live on the beautiful island of Maui. I lost all of my family, my father, then my mother, and then my sister. And in 2004, my sister passed. She was the last of the three. And I wrote a book um, called Taking Care of Barbara, A Journey Through Life and Alzheimer's and 29 Insights for Caregivers. And that was a way of um, thinking about my whole family. It has my father's and my mother's passing in it, and my sister Barbara's and my journey through Alzheimer's. And I wrote the book to help all the caregivers in the world to make their journeys much easier and much happier. For I tried to make every single day of my sister's life of 10 years with Alzheimer's as wonderful as possible. My father passed July 29th of 1995. Uh, uh, and I, at that time I was working on cruise ships around the world and he wanted to pass in his own bed. So I told him I'd get off the ship and help him do that. So I took care of him for three, his last three weeks and we had a wonderful time. He was dying of cancer and he'd also had severe post-polio syndrome for about 25 years. He was ready to pass. We had talked a lot about what was on the other side and he was ready to go. And I thanked him for being such a wonderful father and he thanked me for being a wonderful daughter. And the last day of his life, uh, he was uh, just sleeping because he had been given morphine. And my mother sat on one side of him, I sat on the other holding his hands. Uh, there was no response to him, except for every time my mother said to him, sweetheart, I'm gonna give you a kiss, he could pucker his lips, but he could make no other movement, he couldn't move his body other than puckering his lips and mother would give him a kiss. And that was the most amazing experience to see that happen. And about three minutes before he passed, um, all of a sudden his eyes had opened up and they hadn't been open for three days. And he looked up to his right and it was the most beautiful look I've ever seen. It was like, I'm coming. Um, it was like he was seeing his parents. It was pure bliss and joy. And then he closed his eyes and mother again said, sweetheart, I'm gonna give you a kiss. And he puckered up and they kissed, and then he slipped out of his body. And it was a beautiful experience for all of us. And then in, 19, in 2001, May 10th, my mother passed. And I left my sister with three caregivers because she was in advanced Alzheimer's at the time and in Hawaii. And I flew to Oregon where my mother was. And my son, William, both of us, and a few family friends were with my mother when she passed. I took some beautiful flower lays from Hawaii where she was born and raised in Hawaii. And that was a great joy to smell the flowers and see them again before she passed. And about three hours before she passed, I asked if she'd like to call friends or relatives to tell them goodbye. And she said yes, and that was an amazing experience. Uh, she called her niece and nephews and a couple friends and she called her brother-in-law. And her brother-in-law, Uncle Roy, had quite a sense of humor. Uh, he was married to her identical twin sister who had passed seven months after my father passed. And Uncle Roy said, Mom asked if what he would like her to tell B when she arrived on the other side. And he said to please have her have a peanut butter jelly and jelly sandwich ready for her when he arrived. And so last year I helped Uncle Roy pass over his last three days. And when he passed, I'm sure Andy B had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich waiting for him. And then my sister, uh, we had wonderful times. We had great challenges, which are all in the book to help other caregivers know what to do when they have the same great challenges I had with my sister. And the last two weeks of my sister's life, were quite an amazing experience for her and for me. Um, she was bedridden and she reached up with both of her arms continuously reaching for our departed relatives, mom and dad, grandparents, aunts and uncles. And she was in complete bliss and it was quite amazing. I had Mozart playing in her room. I sprinkled essential oil of lavender around her room. So it had just an amazing feeling in her room when people would come to say goodbye to her. 
they didn't want to leave because it was such an amazing experience. And so she would reach and reach and reach and I'd walk into the room and I'd say, um, is mom here? And she would look at me and her smile would even get bigger and she would nod and I said, where is she? And she'd point to where she was towards the ceiling. Mom was always there, dad was there sometimes, about half the time, grandparents were there in and out. But I then asked her if she wanted to leave and go to them and she'd look at me and nod with the most beautiful big smile. And on New Year's Day evening, she passed over and the next morning, I talked to friends and relatives about her passing all day until evening when I went to get some food for myself. And when we were children, we would go out and pick um, butterfly cocoons very carefully, bring them in the house, and then they would eventually hatch and we'd watch them hatch and the butterfly wings would open up and slowly flap and we'd hold them for a while. And, uh, and then we'd take them outside and release them. And then when we'd walk out in the garden um, in the weeks to come, the butterflies would come and land on our hands or on our shoulders. And it was quite a wonderful experience. The last day of Barbara's life, I was laying on her bed with her and I told her about that um, childhood memory. After I came home from getting some food the next evening, it was dark and I've never seen butterflies flying at night. And this butterfly was beating its wings, trying to get into the house. And I said, oh my goodness. And I held my hands out for it and it landed on my hand and sat there and I talked to it for about five minutes. And then it tried to get into the door again. And then it landed on my leg for about five minutes. Then it tried to get into the house and I held my hand down again and it sat on my hand for about five minutes and I talked to it and then I held it up for it to fly away. And that had a very special meaning for a connection with my sister. And so I've written this book and it has all of this information in it. And everyone who has read the book, there's been several hundred so far and it's all changed their life and in greatly inspired them. Uh, people from age 16 to 95 have read it and it helps the caregivers in knowing what to do for their loved ones and helping them pass over to the other side. And um, that's what I've been doing since my sister passed in writing the book, getting it published, and now trying to get it out to the world. And that's my, my mission in life right now. Aloha.